Hey everybody, we're going to look at one of our really important topics with Logic Pro, and that is the CPU usage. This is something that's always on the forums and online. People are always talking about if their computer's having issues or whatever. But I think it's important to look at at least one key concept that perhaps not everybody fully understands when using Logic. And that's how the CPU usage really is affected by live tracks. Live tracks meaning anything that has some input that may or may not be active. So let me just do this little demonstration for you first. I've got really three different types of tracks here. I've got my drummer track, I've got my four synth tracks, and I've got a track stack. And with this, this is the same project I used in the previous video with the 64 voice synth. But I noticed this as I was doing that and it reminded me to that maybe not everyone fully understands this. Look at my processing threads here when I have my drummer track selected. Now my drummer track doesn't have an active input. You don't use this like a normal MIDI track. I have it selected, nothing's record armed. Look at my CPU usage here. Now I'm going to change this and just select one of the synth parts. It does record enable it but I'm not going to actually touch a MIDI note after I push play. It's just gonna sit there selected. So one of the cores definitely jumps up quite a bit and that's because it is reserving that processing in case I decide to play any notes while it's in that mode. Not only that, but because of the way Logic does this stuff here with, let's pull this up, do that one more time. With the capture recording, this button right there, it actually is recording MIDI anytime a track is record armed, even if it doesn't look like it. So that jumped way up. Now I'm going to select the track stack, the main track there and I'm gonna push play again. Again, I'm not playing any MIDI at all. Now, because I'm doing screen capture, it actually jumped up. I'm gonna push play one more time. It is going a little higher than normal, but it does sit around 50% using two of the cores. And that's partly because this one is sending data to these four individual instruments. So nothing sounds different with any of this. And right here, I've got all four of those cores down really near the bottom. The other thing to, to think about, and I'll, we'll talk about what this all means in a minute, is in here in our preferences, where it says multi-threading, the playback and live tracks is one of the main options but you can choose just to do playback tracks. So what this means is, is that with live tracks, and this is the case if you have multiple audio tracks, multiple instruments, or track stacks, if any of them are engaged as the main input, multi-threading with live tracks turned on means it can split each of these tracks onto different threads. In this case, with it turned off, it's going to force it onto one of them. So now, same test starting with the drummer. Looks pretty much the same. One track. Also looks about the same as before, but now we go to the track stack. And it's still almost just as high, but it's only using one of those because it's being forced to put all of those onto one thread. So what are the takeaways from this? First of all, if you're doing a project that's really big and has a lot of stuff going on, you're using a lot of your processing, you may want to change this if you're having some performance issues if you want to record additional tracks. So that's one of the things right there. You can go back and forth and see which one of them is going to work better in that specific situation. If you're working with one of the beautiful brand new Macs that has tons and tons of different cores, well then it doesn't really matter probably, but you could still run into that. Something like this on this computer with just the four, this could be an issue. 
So definitely figure out which one of those makes the most sense based on how many tracks you're recording or if you're using these track stacks. The other thing to take away from this is that if you have a big project that you're working on mixing and you keep on hitting CPU bumps at certain times, make sure you don't have any of these tracks highlighted when you're playing back. You don't want to have uh, any kind of record enabled thing happening. And that's because if it is doing that, it's taking away some of your processing for something you're not even focusing on. And so make sure you're always double checking that you're not just having open inputs running at the same time as your big project. That will probably help some of your stuff. Now check this out. I've turned off the record enable. It's still selected, but I've turned it off. Check that out. Go back to my drummer. That drives me crazy. This is one of those quirks with Logic that should never happen. If I don't have a record enabled or whatever, it shouldn't be still using all of that CPU. So what I do is on, in projects where this becomes an issue, I just get in the habit of before playback, just making sure that one of these tracks like this is selected that doesn't take up that processing resource. Okay, hope this helps a little bit with this process. I hope you can see now that just because I have a project with just limited tracks that we don't need to worry about the performance meter. This is something with Logic that you need to really understand how it's working so you can adjust your way of working around it. Unfortunately, that's just the situation we're in. But you can see if you know what you're doing and you have a specific track selected or whatever, then we have all the processing in the world that we might ever need. The minute we start selecting some of these other things, it could be an issue. Okay, hope you're having a great week, and we're doing another video in just a couple days.